Welcome back again to uh, our class and lab. I wanted to spend some time today to talk to you about a new concept that's uh, part of chapter number 10. Um, before I start, I just want to quickly uh, say something about a, a reflection that we had earlier this year. So I'm just going to hold up this little uh, symbol for you. You might remember me talking about it before. The Travis Mannion Foundation, uh, the recent emails that I received from them are showing the various kinds of things that men and women are doing uh, to help others, particularly at this time of the, uh, uh, the virus. Um, things like delivering food, helping el elderly people, uh, that kind of thing, where their generosity is being extended to others. Uh, just a little thought as we begin this little lesson today. Uh, I'm going to move the computer around so that you guys can take a look at the lab. Uh, it pretty much is what, the, what it looked like when you left it. However, it has been very carefully disinfected. All of the surfaces, they have been treated with the disinfection agents from the uh, company that does the cleaning in the building. And... Uh, I'm the only person in the room right now, so I'm not wearing a mask. I'm still okay, still protected. And uh, the only thing that's wrong about the lab is it's missing you people. You gentlemen have made the actions of what goes on in the lab uh, all so very important. Um, why am I doing these videos? Well, one of the reasons is uh, you're not able to be here to do experiments, so <clears throat> I felt that it would be better if I could show you some of the things and get an idea of what you would normally be doing if you were here and doing labs hands-on. So this will support some of the ideas that you have seen in the chapter. Uh, behind me, you're going to see a number that you might remember seeing way back in October, in fact on October 23rd, uh, the quantity that we refer to as the mole. So our chapter number 10 deals with that idea. And uh, just to give you a sense of what that's like, I'm going to put a couple of notes on the board here for you. <clears throat> and as I write these, you can be writing them in uh, your notes also. Uh, I'm going to start off by simply saying we can count things with various numbers. So if I want a count of things, there's a number of ways to do it. A, a typical count that you have heard about and used is a dozen. For example, a dozen donuts, uh, a dozen apples. When you count that quantity out, it gives you a, a sense of how much is going to be there. Well, it turns out that this very large number that's behind me here, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, is just that, it's a count. We call it the mole. It's named after Amadeo Avogadro. So we refer to it as Avogadro's number. So if I put the numbers up here, the dozen is 12, the mole 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So if you were to write that in your notebooks, it would be 6.02 followed by 21 zeros. We don't bother to try to pronounce it in terms of millions or billions. We just write the number in scientific notation. If I want to count something, for example, I have my, my jar of pennies here, and you guys have used these already. Uh, there's a couple of ways I could figure out how many pennies are in here. And some of my students have figured out how to do that. Uh, a couple different techniques that you can use. I want you to think about how you would count the pennies. I'm going to give you one example, physically count them one by one. But think of maybe a couple other ways that you could count that. And if you could put that idea that you have, put it right in your notes, kind of like an answer to my question. Other ways that you could count the particles in something. I'm going to turn up the video to get you ready for the next demonstration. Okay, I've rearranged where my computer is located. And I want to show you a little demonstration on the, the bench top here. Uh, 
I'm going to try to get this a little closer at points where you can see better. Uh, I have lined up uh, four rectangular blocks of metal, and uh, they vary in their height. The reason for that is uh, they're comparing uh, something about their sameness. How are they alike? And what I'm going to do is take each block individually, put it on the balance that I have here, and see what its mass is like. So here's the first block, and it's reading 27.1 grams. Let me bring up the computer a little bit so you can see that. 27.01 grams. That's a piece of aluminum. It's a fairly light metal. You guys have experienced that before. Uh, next, I'm going to take a piece of steel. I'm going to place, it's actually iron. I'm going to place that on the pan. <clears throat> that one reads a little higher. It's 55.86. Now, the two numbers that I've mentioned to you, if I compare the mass to the value of the periodic table's mass, they turn out to be very close to one another, you know, given the un uncertainties that are connected with the balance. So for the uh, iron right now, I'm reading 55.86, and on the periodic table, I read 55.847. Very good agreement. Next metal is zinc. Gray, a little bit heavy. I put that on. The value on the scale is saying 65.48. I look for element 30 on the periodic table. It says 65.38. We're off by a tenth of a gram, but not too bad in, in terms of uh, the ability of the balance to be certain. The last metal, copper, and that's reading 63.58. I look at element 29 in the periodic table. 63.546, very good agreement. So all of these little pieces of metal have a uh, different mass, but there's a commonality with all of them. How are they all alike? Well, it turns out that they all have this number of particles in them, the Avogadro number. They all are one mole. And you can see that not only are their weights different, but their volumes are a little bit different. That gives us a little concept that we can talk about in reference to the mole. And I'm going to turn the video off so I can put some information on the board and show you that. So I'm realigned again now with a couple ideas that I want to show you on the board here. If I'm counting a dozen donuts, there's some other things that I can measure in reference to the donuts. Let me give you some examples. I can figure out how heavy they are. I can get their mass. Do they take up a certain amount of space? Yes. So I can put down their volume. Are there a number of particles with them? Yes. I can count the number of particles or number of donuts. Do they have energy? Well, we're very aware that donuts have a lot of calories in them. So you can even figure out from the count how much energy might be stored in the donuts. Four different kinds of measurements, all from counting a dozen donuts. Now, let me do another little comparison here. I'm going to turn the video off for a second. So, so here's my board now, slightly re-labeled. Uh, I still got mass, I still have volume, number of donuts. I'm going to change that to number of atoms or molecules, and I still have energy. Up at the top, I'm now considering the mole to be a mole of elements or and a mole of compounds. So down here, I'm going to put atoms or molecules. Let me fix that for you. So a mole can count things just like the dozen can count things. Let me turn off our video, show you some more. Our final idea that I want to show you deals with a compound, and it's a very common substance that you're aware of. 
uh, it is water. And what I want to do is I want to show you how we can figure out how much a quantity of a mole of water would be. And there's a very easy way to do that. We were talking about using the periodic table. Well, all I have to do is put down my formula, H2O, and then figure out how much of each atom I have, how many atoms I have, and how heavy they are. So in H2O, I would have 2 times H, and I would have 1 times O. The 1 is understood, but not written. I now go to the periodic table. So I grab my periodic table. Element 1 is hydrogen, and element number 8 is oxygen. I look at their masses. I'll put those down. 2 times 1.00, I'll call it 8 grams, and then oxygen, 1 times 15.999. I'll multiply these through. Let me tur turn this a little bit. This will be 2.016 grams, and this will still be 15.99 grams, and then I'll add them together. The total will give me 18 0.015 grams. That's what a mole of water would weigh. Welcome back again to uh, our class and lab. I wanted to spend some time today to talk to you about a new concept that's uh, part of chapter number 10. Um, before I start, I just want to quickly uh, say something about a, a reflection that we had earlier this year. I'm just going to hold up this little uh, symbol for you. You might remember me talking about it before. The Travis Mannion Foundation, uh, the recent emails that I received from them are showing the various kinds of things that men and women are doing uh, to help others, particularly at this time of the uh, uh, the virus. Um, things like delivering food, helping el elderly people, uh, that kind of thing where their generosity is being extended to others. Uh, just a little thought as we begin this little lesson today. Uh, I'm going to move the computer around so that you guys can take a look at the lab. Uh, it pretty much is what, the, what it looked like when you left it. However, it has been very carefully disinfected. All of the surfaces, they have been treated with the disinfection agents from the uh, company that does the cleaning in the building. And uh, I'm the only person in the room right now, so I'm not wearing a mask. I'm still okay, still protected. And uh, the only thing that's wrong about the lab is it's missing you people. You gentlemen have made the actions of what goes on in the lab uh, all so very important. Um, why am I doing these videos? Well, one of the reasons is uh, you're not able to be here to do experiments, so <clears throat> I felt that it would be better if I could show you some of the things and get an idea of what you would normally be doing if you were here and doing labs hands-on. So this will support some of the ideas that you have seen in the chapter. Uh, behind me, you're going to see a number that you might remember seeing way back in October. In fact, on October 23rd, uh, the quantity that we refer to as the mole. So our chapter number 10 deals with that idea. And uh, just to give you a sense of what that's like, I'm going to put a couple of notes on the board here for you. <clears throat> And as I write these, you can be writing them in uh, your notes also. Uh, I'm going to start off by simply saying we can count things with various numbers. So if I want to count of things, there's a number of ways to do it. A, a typical count that you have heard about and used is a dozen. For example, a dozen donuts, uh, a dozen apples. When you qu count that quantity out, it gives you a, a sense of how much is going to be there. Well, it turns out that this very large number that's behind me here 
6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is just that. It's a count. 